Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really gonna help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today, I'm gonna continue the Magic Leap development videos. I'm gonna be focusing on particle systems in this video. We're gonna be looking at how to create particle systems when we're using the Magic Leap device. How do we change some of the settings so that they actually look good on the device? So not only I'm gonna show you particle systems, but we're actually gonna look at a scene that I created with a rocket. This rocket, it's gonna be basically using a rigid body. We're gonna be using physics to change the acceleration of the rocket and also using the controller trigger to control the acceleration. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what I did in this scene to get the rocket, the earth, and basically the controller to launch the rocket. So what I wanna show you in this scene is basically how to get particles working. I know many of you ask me about particles, how they work, and to be honest, I, I kept this very simple. I'm not making anything really complicated because I think the main purpose for this video is to show you the, the particle system that Unity provides out of the box and I'm not talking about VFX graph, I'm talking about just a regular particle system. It actually works really well with Magic Leap. So I wanna show you some of the particle systems that I created, and actually fairly simple. I just had to tweak a couple of things to make it look how I want it. So the way that I have the scene set up is I have basically two scenes right now. So if you watch my previous video, you know that I, that I created a scene for the Earth rotating. So let me actually go to that scene so you know what that is. So this one is fairly simple. I created a project to show you that we could launch with the new workflow changes that Magic Leap made. We could actually see an Earth rotating. And if you hit play, you're gonna see that the Earth starts rotating. And then we have the basically our canvas following our head pose. So what I did is I cloned that, I cloned that scene and I created a new scene. And this thing is actually called earth and rocket controller the reason why i call it that is because not only i have an earth but i also have a rocket and i also have a controller that for now it basically just changes the acceleration of the of the rocket so let me play the scene and you can see what to expect in this scene when you run it on the magic leap so i'm gonna i'm gonna pause it basically mute the audio so that you can hear me but i basically have audio running because i want it i really like audio and music when i'm creating games so it just basically makes things more fun and more vivid so i added audio to this one as well so as you can see i have the head pose canvas and for every video that i'm going to be creating from now on and some of the ones that i created previously i am not only creating a canvas a head pose canvas but i'm also explaining what to do in this experience. So in this case, I have to use the controller trigger to increase the rocket upward, upward acceleration. So one thing that I did on the controller is I'm also using the up arrow because I don't wanna have to run this on Magic Leap to test it. So the up arrow is basically, it's like a mock-up of the control. So it allows me to change the acceleration of the rocket. So you can see that it's going up. And then when the rocket falls down, it's actually colliding with the with the platform. So that's another thing that I wanted to do. When I when I started working on this scene, I I had the particles going through and that just didn't feel right. And now you can see if I move the platform, the rocket is falling because there's rigid bodies assigned to the rocket. And also the particles that are assigned to the rocket are colliding with the basically with a plane which I call the platform, which you can see right here. So that's basically kind of what the scene does. It's very basic, but I want to show you how I got some of these things to look the way that they look. So the other thing that I want to show you before we go into the structure, I want to show you how it looks in Magic Leap. So I'm going to pull a video that I recorded prior to showing you this demo and basically shows you how it looks in the device. So here I'm basically running the, running the experience in my device and it's gonna launch in just a second here. I'm just in my office and so there you can see the, let me, yeah, let me mute the audio so that you can basically watch what I'm doing and I can explain it to you. So I'm basically looking around and you can see, you know, some of the starts. You can also see that the head post canvas is following me. 
I'm also holding the trigger button to basically change the acceleration of the rocket. So right now, when when it departs, it basically it's going to start colliding with the platform. So if we go back here, you can see. Let me see if we can get a shot of that. It's kind of hard to see, but at this point, the particles are colliding with the platform. And then as it is departing, it basically, and I'm looking around, so it's making it really hard to see. But as it's departing, the particles are no longer because they're far away from the platform. So let me just click on this so you can hear the music. And if I go forward, you can see that I'm basically just walking around my office because I wanted to see how it looks. And if I go forward, you can see that I'm, that is basically falling back down because there are rigid bodies associated with the rocket and it's falling in place. And here's a good shot because it shows you that the particles are colliding with the platform and also they just look really cool when you do that. So let me go back into Unity and hopefully that gives you enough information about what we're building and what I built. So what I have right now is I have the same structure that Magically provides in every one of their examples. We have a content game object and I also have a rendering game object. So under the content, I have the earth, which I'm using the animator and this is the earth that comes out of the box with their example. So if you search for earth, you're gonna see that they have multiple examples. So I'm basically using their assets for this demo. So that's what this is. I basically scale it up to 10, 10, and 10 because I wanted to see it bigger and I want it to be, you know, a scale to be, you know, much bigger than what the rocket was. So the other thing that I have in here is below the earth, I have the stars. And that's another thing that I wanted to show you. So I wanted to show you that you can also have stars or simulate stars by using particle system. So if we go here on the right hand side, you can see that this is a basic particle system. I have the duration set to five. I am of course looping because I want the particles to be looping through the start time. And some of these, to be honest, I just been tweaking them. I'm not gonna tell you that this was the perfect formula, but I just tweak it until I get uh, the look and feel that I want it. So if, obviously if I change the size and you want it to get, you know, stars much bigger, you can change some of the sizes that I have in here. I started at 0 0.04 because I really wanted to give you, you know, the sense that there were stars and they were really far away. But you're more than welcome to change some of these ones. I also changed the simulation speed to be 3 but if you want to make it higher, let's say that you're moving through space, you can make this something like, you know, 100 or you can make it a 1000 because you are maybe in a rocket and the rocket is going in that direction. So you can play with those numbers. So let me go back and I'm going to set it back to 3 because I want them to be more of idols and maybe some of them disappear. So I think three gave me what I was looking for. The, the other thing that I had that was, is really important is I was using the shape. So out of the box, this was basically setting it to cone and it didn't look right. So I changed the shape to be a sphere and that way it allows me to control, you know, how far I want the particles to spawn with. So if I want the particles to be within that range, then I can change the radius if I wanted to, if I wanted, if I wanted to be a smaller, basically a smaller range, I could change the radius to be something much smaller. Obviously, I wanted to kind of be around the space in my office, so my office is about that size in meters. So that size was was working for me. So I made it about 20. Obviously, you can make this more dynamic based on the space that you get from either the the mapper, the special mapper that you have. You can basically control that. By, by basically doing some calculations and setting the radius based on the space that you're on. For now, we're just keeping it simple, so I change it to 20. And then some of these ones I use basically left as default. The emission I also left as default to be a 10. That was the rate over time. The other thing that I wanted to control is I wanted to control the color. So I'm using a blend. So if I, if I click on the color, you can see that I'm using a blend. I'm going from basically from a white color to a black color. The reason I wanted to do that is because I wanted him to show, you know, I wanted to show the stars and then I wanted to fade them out. And that's what you can see some of these ones are fading out because the color that gets applied when they're coming to life is white and then they go back down to black. So you can play with some of these ones. Obviously you can change the colors if you like to, if you wanted to make meteors, you can change that. 
maybe to make it more of a yellowish color that works as well i might actually do that in some of the future some of the future videos so the other thing that i have in here is, is the size over time this one this one was very important because i wanted to control the size when so when particles are created at the beginning the size is going to be set to one and then at the end of their life i want it to be much smaller so that's why you're seeing some of the sizing changing in here if i were to change this to be much bigger you can see that some of the size is now much bigger they're basically going from one and then to a larger number so i'm just going to undo that so you can play with some of these curves you can you know it depends on what you're looking for these work really well for what i for what i'm doing and then so this is really helpful and obviously you can change some of the things that i'm doing here this particle system wasn't colliding with anything because this is not really colliding with anything they're basically far away stars so i didn't need to use the collision i'm using the collision in the in the rocket so i'll show you how those particles are set up the the other thing that i'm using here is the render because we do want to render the we we want to render the particle so you have to enable that feature i'm also using the mesh render mode you can change this to billboard you can change this to something else the the reason why i did that is because i wanted to control the shape of the basically of the particles you can see that there are spheres and that's why i'm using the sphere pro mesh which is part of the solution so you can look and search for that and you can see what that looks like it's basically a sphere and then some of the other things that i did in here I actually didn't change anything else i left that by default and i'm using the default particle system shader and that actually works really well for what we're doing so that's basically how the stars are set up so the next thing that i want to show you is how i set up the the one that is right beneath the rocket which is basically the the fire that comes out of the rocket just to simulate that this is a rocket that is launching and there's the engine is basically on so as you can see if we get if we get close to it let me see if i can get closer yeah if we get close to it they're kind of spheres as well and it actually turns out to look really really cool so the the way that i did this and if i if i move this down a tiny bit because i want to show you all the different particles that i have if i were to select all the fourth particle systems there's also a particle system on, on each one of these basically these i don't know what they're called but it's basically where the engines are and if i select each one of the engines you can see that the there is fire coming out of them i'm probably not using the right names for any of these i apologize but you you probably know what i'm talking about <laughs> so you can see that you know that's coming out and then the there's particles on each one of these engines so the the way that i have it working you can see that if i do that and then i go back to main now they're colliding with the with the plane so let me go ahead and undo what i did so that we have the right position again uh, let me just undo that one more time and it looks like i did a lot of selections so let's just go back i'll just put it back i think that's i think we can start at somewhere like that works yeah there we go so how did i do those particles and how do i made it collide with the plane so let me show you this one which is the bigger one so this one also uses the same you know kind of the same features that i did for the star except i, I make some changes to to the setup so i still have a duration of five seconds i'm still looping through i still have the size to be 0 0.03 so it's very low size if you want to go bigger of course you can be much bigger but you can see how that is that is changing quite a bit how the particles look like if i want it to be something like 0 0.02 you can see that that's much smaller i think 0 0.03 is the number that work best for me so i'm just gonna set it back to that and then on these other ones i made it much smaller and you can also play with the scale i try to focus as much uh, you know changes on the particle system settings versus the scale because i in a lot of times if you change that it's actually going to change the texture and it might not look as good as good as you you think it's going to look so make sure that you change the particle system first before scaling anything so as you can see here the the simulation speed on this one is much higher the reason why i made it much higher is because i wanted to you know i want the speed of it to be much faster and that's why you're seeing the particles are just spawning really really fast and that's because the simulation speed is, is a very large number so if i were to change that to a one it's really not going to look real so you want to go for a large number there 
in fact we can just go to 24 i think that that works really well and then some of the other the other settings i didn't touch those were about the same as you can see this matches the same emission the rate over time is the same as on the stars so i didn't change anything there the the shape here that worked the best for me was the cone I, I didn't use the you know the sphere that I used on the other one so on this one it worked really well to use a cone and then the angle I set it to 5 and then I play with the radius I think 0 0.0001 was the one that works best for this so if I change this to let's say I change it to 20 or a different number you can see how that is affecting how it looks you might like that look and, and to be honest that actually looks really cool but for me the, the look that I was looking for was you know a lower a lower angle so I went with a 5 I think that works but if you wanted to exaggerate it you could change the angle and obviously some of these other settings so the color over time on this one was really was really one of the one of the one of the kicks to make it look how it looks you can see that it's starting at a white color and then it goes to kind of like a reddish color and then it ends at a yellow and then a black at the very bottom so you can see that that follows the plane so I, I play a lot of, a lot with the blends when it comes to particles, either the VFX graph or particles that are, that are part of this system. So as you can see, I have a blend. And if you want to add another, basically another one of these pointers, you can basically click here and it'll add another one. So I could just add, add one right here if I wanted to. And you can see that, that it's going to add another one of these. And then I can change the color. So for the, if I want to remove it, I can just drag drag it up and that will go away let's see if i there we go so that went away so you can click on each one of them and then you know if you already add them you can tweak it and you can see how that is changing if i want this to maybe i want more yellow towards the end i can move it to the right and you can see how that is changing in real time i'm going to go back here because i want them to be you know when they start i want them to be white and then red and then yellow and then in a black so that gave me the look that I was looking for. Of, of course, you can change that if you like. So that's what color over lifetime is. And then size over time, I use the same setup that I had on the starts. I started with a large size and then I went back down, went up and then down. So you can add keys. Basically, if I right click in here, add a key and then you can change the curve if you like, or you can use one of these pretty fine curves. I use those from time to time. But if I want more control of how the curve look like, I can add keys and basically control the keys and curves on my own. So that's what the size over time is. Then collision is really important in this case because let's say that I don't enable collision. You're going to see the particles are now going to go through the platform and that doesn't really look cool. And I enable collision. Now the collisions are basically, basically colliding with the platform. So I did the same thing with each one of these. The difference between fire main in Fire Mini, Fire Mini is just smaller. That's all it is, but they all are colliding with the same object. So if I show you this, it's basically gonna be the same as Fire Mini. Fire Mini just has a smaller particles. And so how do you make basically particles collide with another object? And it's actually fairly easy. You wanna make sure that the object that you're colliding with has a box collider or, or some kind of collider. And in my case, I have a box collider on that object then on fire main what i'm doing is i basically have the transform of the platform of the object that i'm colliding with is asso associated with the plane on the collision on the collision node so you can see i have collisions enabled i select it to be the type plane and then i basically drag and drop that platform to be under planes and that on its own is working well i also change the bounds to be zero because by default unity uses the value of one and if I use a value of one, the particles are gonna bounce up at a very rapid speed. And I didn't want that to happen. Obviously, if you wanna bounce, you can do maybe a lower number, like maybe 0.2. And you can see that that is bouncing. And you know, you can use that for fire. You can use that for other things, I think. But for what I needed, I think zero worked really well. You can also change some of the settings like the lifetime loss, the minimum kill speed, maximum kill speed, and some of these settings that Honestly, I didn't need to use at this point, but I will show you how to use some of those in the future videos. Then some of the other settings, the, the other one that I used was the render. I, I had the same setup that I had on the on the starts. I have a mesh, 
I also have the, basically the Sphere Pro assigned to the mesh, and then I didn't really change any of the other settings. So that's basically everything that I had as far as like the particle setup. So it was actually fairly easy to get things going and, and it, w it took more time to tweak it to, you know, to look how it looks right now. But once you get one going, it's really easy to clone them and then basically tweak them until you get the look and feel that you're looking for. So that's what the Earth is, the stars is, the rocket. And then I'll show you, I show you some of the particle systems that I have. Currently have four under the rocket and when the rocket changes acceleration, the particles are following the rocket. Then I show you the, basically the platform is basically a cube that is resized with a box collider. And then the audio, it's very simple. All I, all I have is an audio listener, an audio source, and then I download it from the YouTube library, an audio clip, which is Mission to Mars. And this is from the library that YouTube makes available for people to use. So you can also find that under audio here. And I'm going to be adding more as I work on more experiences. So the next thing that I want to show you is if I hit play and I want to show you how the rocket works and also show you some of the configuration of the rocket. So if I hit the up arrow, you can see that the, the, the acceleration of the rocket is increasing upward. And the way that I achieve that is I have multiple components on this rocket. So I want to show you some of the components that I have on the rocket. And, and you can apply these to other things that you're looking for. And, and you know, obviously on this one, I, I'm using it for a rocket, but a lot of these principles can be applied to multiple things. So on this one, I have a box collider, and you can see that it's basically surrounding the area. The reason why I added that is because I wanted to, basically, if I collide with the platform below, I want it... I want, I want that box collider to collide with the platform so that the rocket is basically stopped. The other thing that I have in here is I have a rigid body. The reason why I'm using a rigid body is because I want physics to use to be used when the rocket is basically accelerated and I want it to use gravity. So when I basically let go of the up arrow, you can see that the rocket is falling in place. So the mass on the rigid body, I set it to five. And I'm gonna be honest, a lot of these things I had to tweak quite a bit until I had it perfect. There's really no perfect way to do this other than you know getting the, gra the gravity and the object set up you know, after you test it quite a bit of times. So that's what I always like to say that this is just from practice and, and just you know tweaking the settings until I was happy with the results. So for this setup, the mass that I'm using is five, the drag that I'm using is 20, the reason why I did the drag so high is because I wanted the object to be dragged by gravity. So if I let go of the up arrow, if I change that to zero, that's gonna fall down really fast and that's really not gonna look real, especially if I have the, if I'm accelerating and you see that the engines are on. So if it's falling down too fast, it's not gonna look real. So I changed the drag just to make it more look like a real rocket. I also left the angular drag to be the default. I didn't change that. I, I'm using gravity, like I told you, so that's what I have that check. The, the other thing that I'm using here is I have a couple of constraints. I have a constraint on X, I have a cons constraint on Z, because I don't want to change the position of those two axes. I only want to change the position of Y, and, and right now that's okay, but in a future video I want to change that, because we're going to be controlling basically the tilt of this rocket based on the rotation of our controller. So for now this works because I just wanted to show you particles and also acceleration of the rocket. So that's what I'm basically constraining the position and rotation on the X and Z axis. The other thing that I have in here is I have a connection, a controller connection handler, because as the instructions say, use the controller trigger to increase the rocket upward acceleration. So I'm using the trigger button on the Magic Leap controller to basically increase the acceleration of the rocket. So I'm also using the up arrow on the keyboard to basically to mock that up in the editor. And I'll show you the code and see how that works. The other thing that I have in here is also the upward force. So this is the value that we basically multiply when we're adding the force to the rocket. So I'll show you that in the code as well. And then the other thing that I, that I found out that worked best for me. So if I didn't do the constant force, so this is a component that Unity now provides that allows you to override the force of a component. So in this one, I wanted to override the force that gets applied on Y. So this allowed me to, it allowed me to make it more realistic. So 
I wanted to change the force that was applied to the y value when this, this was falling down. So I'm using basically a combination of the drag and also the force, the constant force that gets applied to the y axis. And if you look at when I hit the up arrow, it's also rotating a little bit. I could have coded that if I wanted to by just multiplying by delta and then you know doing doing a transform and then rotate. But instead of doing that, I could use also the constant force and, and add a relative, basically a relative torque. And this value is the one that is applying basically a rotation when when this is accelerating. So that's what I'm using the rel relative torque for that on the y-axis and also the force on the y-axis. So let me show you the code and see how that works. So I'm going to show you the rocket controller. All right, so some of the things that I have in here is this is the one that is controlling the force that gets applied to the rocket, not only through the Magic Leap controller, but also in the editor. So one of the requirements is that I want to have a controller connection handler. This is because we're going to be using the Magic Leap controller. So I made that as a requirement. So if you add this component to another game that you have, it's going to it's basically going to add a component of type controller connection handler automatically for you. And then the other field that I show you that I have is the upward force. So I have it set to 5 by default. And then I'm also getting basically, I have a private variable that gets a rigid body. I'm losing my voice because I'm talking a lot. <laughs> But I'm basically getting the rigid body, uh, a rigid body instance on the awake method so that I can use it throughout the game, throughout this code. And then I also set a private Boolean is triggered down because I want to know when somebody presses the trigger on the Magic Leap controller, if the trigger down is executed, I know that somebody's pressing it. And then when they release that, I basically set that to false. So I'll show you how that, is, that gets set here in a second. So on the awake method, I get a basically a reference to the rigid body. I also on the star method, I also get a reference to the connection, the controller connection handler by doing a get component controller connection handler. It gets me that component, and then I'm binding two two of the events that the ML input has, which is on trigger down and on trigger up, and then I'm basically just wire, wiring them up to an event that is in this class. So I'll show you those ones as well. So if you look at handle on trigger down and handle on trigger up, these are these two methods that are right here. And I'll show you those in a minute. Then the other thing that I wanted to control is I wanted to control the force that gets applied. So if you if you haven't if you haven't played with, with physics a lot in Unity, you want to make sure that anytime that you're applying physics, you're you are you are doing that in the fix update. And the reason for that is because this doesn't execute on every frame. So if you want to apply forces, it's recommended by Unity that you do that on fix update. You might you might know that already, but if you don't know, I think that's something that is really helpful for you to know. And this is basically what I'm doing for the editor. So if we are running on the Unity editor, I'm using and getting the key for from basically from the keyboard. If somebody presses the up arrow, I apply a force. If we're not in the Unity editor, which means that we're running on the Magic Leap device. I check to see if the is triggered down boolean is set to true. If it's set to true, I apply that force. If it's not set to true, I don't apply a force. So now, how does this is triggered down gets set when we're running on the Magic Leap device? So I show you two of the methods that I have bound to the ML input methods on trigger down and on trigger up. So those methods are right here. One is private void handle on trigger down. The other one is the same private void handle and trigger up. And they both take a byte controller ID and also a flow value. And this is pretty standard. Like if you if you want to look at my code to get a reference, you can do that as well. But if you don't have my code and you want to see how, how Magic Leap does it, they also have an example under the controller scene. And if we go, let me make sure that I know where that is. I believe that one is under yeah, if you look at the controller feedback example, they have they have various examples of how they bound to methods and basically different bounds on the controller. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm basically getting the controller by looking at the controller connection handler, and then I'm checking to make sure that the con the controller is not null, and then that I, the ID matches the controller ID that I am getting basically that I'm bounding to on the event. The other thing that I'm do that I'm doing here that I saw the Magic Leap was doing 
is I actually get feedback from basically on the on the remote is basically going to vibrate. That's what this gives you. It gives you the intensity and it basically sends the boss to the controller. And then I set the each trigger down equal to true. So if I'm holding the trigger bound key, I'm going to check to make sure that I do have the controller, that everything is set up correctly. Then I'm buzzing the, the controller and then I'm setting the basically that value to true, which is basically going to apply a force to a rigid body, which is therefore applied to the rocket that we have that we have in the scene. So as, as soon as I let go of the trigger button, this is also going to get executed. I didn't need to boss the user again. I think it's enough if we boss them one more time, one time when we push it. And then when we let go, we don't need to boss them again. And then what I do is basically I set its trigger down to false, which basically doesn't apply a force to the rigid body. So now that I that I show you how we how we basically handle the controls and the trigger buttons, so now how do we apply a force to a rigid body? And and this is fairly simple. All I'm doing is saying, okay, rigid body at a force a position, and this rigid body is the rigid body that we have attached to the rocket controller. And I'm basically saying at force a position, I'm using vector three that up and then multiplying that by the, by the upward force, which in, which in our case is 5.0 float. And then I'm basically also, some of the parameters here is the, at, what, at what location that we want to start applying the force. And I'm basically grabbing the transform position, which is the position of, of the rigid body of this component at basically at right now. So if I'm applying a force, and let's say that the force got me to a value of 20 on the y-axis, this is basically going to start at 20. And also it's going to look at x and z, what the value is at that point after applying the force. And then I'm also using the force mode of acceleration. And then when we destroy the object, we're basically just bas uh, destroying the connection that we have with the handle on trigger down and also handle on trigger up. This is very common, like if you're binding to a method on the ML input, make sure that when you destroy that object, you remove that connection. So I know that I talk a lot and I was basically losing my voice. I apologize about that, but I hope this was helpful. And if you guys have any questions about anything that I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video about Magic League development. If you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know through the comments. Also make sure that you check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.